Hey, what is going on everybody? It's your favorite introvert here and today we're going to be going over Mission Hub in the Litchi app. Well, technically it's not in the Litchi app. It is on flylitchy.com slash hub. So you can create a mission at your home in the comfort of your pajamas, sitting on the couch, and then you can go out and fly your mission. Pretty interesting. Um, some of the features I'm not quite sure of, like the sharing of your missions to the public, because that's, that seems kind of weird to me. But we'll go over it. What Mission Hub does is it lets you plan waypoint missions from a Mac or PC. The cool feature of Litchi Mission Hub is if you are logged in to your Litchi account, saving a mission will automatically synchronize it across all devices that are logged into your account as well. Mission Hub lets you browse missions from other users around the world or publish your own missions and videos for others to see. This is kind of questionable for me. I don't know if I'll use it or not, but that's up to you. What do you think? Leave it in the comments below and I uh, would love to hear your opinion. It is recommended though that you use Google Chrome as the browser of choice to maximize your experience. First we will go over the commands and options as well as the user interface to familiarize ourselves with Mission Hub and then we will program a short mission and go fly. So let's get into it. First we'll start with the on-screen commands. Clear all. Clear all removes all waypoints and points of interest. Move mission. Click to enable the move tool. Once enabled, you can move the entire mission by dragging any waypoint. Additionally, you can click anywhere on the map. Move the mission to that location. Scale mission. Click to enable the scaling tool. Once enabled, you can scale the entire mission by clicking on a waypoint, holding the click, and moving the mouse. Like so. Rotate mission. Click to enable the rotate tool. Once enabled, you can click anywhere on the map to place the rotation center. Then click on any waypoint, hold the click, and rotate around the center to rotate the entire mission. Log in and log out. Click to log into or log out of your Litchi account. Once logged in, saved missions will automatically synchronize across all devices where you are also logged in. All right, we're going to cover the missions menu here. We have new. Click to create a new mission. Open. There's my missions tab. You can open your own missions and view slash edit them. Attaching a video to a mission and disabling the private checkbox will make it appear on the map for other users. The mission browser's discover tab lists public missions from other Litchi users. Right here, if you create a mission, it will show in the Discover tab. This is where you can see other people's missions. That's pretty interesting because you can see other people's work and see what they've done. I really like that. That's pretty cool. I don't like sharing my area, but that's pretty cool that this is available. Hmm. I wonder where this is. Anywho, back to the video. Save. Click to save the current mission. At least two waypoints are required. Import. Click to import the mission into Mission Hub. Supported file formats are CSV, KML, and Litchi mission files. Export as CSV. Click to export the current mission as a CSV file. That's basically like your Excel documents there. Export as KML 3D path. Click to export the current path mission as a KML file. This can then be imported into Google Earth Pro to view the planned mission in 3D. So if you plan on using Google Earth, then that will be valuable information to you. Altitude modes. By default, waypoint altitudes are relative to the takeoff point, which is also generally the home point. If you enable the above ground option in the waypoint settings, the altitude you enter will be relative to the ground below the waypoint. When above ground is enabled for a waypoint, the waypoints icon will show two altitudes. The altitude above ground, which it will be yellow, and the calculated altitude, which will be in white. Relative to the takeoff point will be the altitude sent to the drone. Alright, with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's actually create a mission. I'm going to go ahead down here and clear on the eraser, so we've cleared it out. Scrolling over here to the back patio where the first waypoint's going to be. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to have the above ground selected as for your altitude. 
Let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is the first waypoint is going to be in the, middle, be in the middle of the backyard. Don't know how accurate it is. So right now we're just showing the white altitude meter here. If I click on the above ground, it's going to select the 200 in yellow and have 200 in white. So that's going to give me an above ground reference of the actual height of my backyard, the altitude there. So anyway, let's go over the waypoint settings real quick. You have your latitude and longitude here, which is probably grayed out because, heck, I don't want you guys showing up at my front porch. We have altitude of 200 feet. Speed will be set to cruising. Curve size, once we have turns and curves, we can set that to how large or small the curves we want. And our heading, of course, is 236 degrees, which is the heading that the first waypoint is. Uh, we don't have a POA, or excuse me, we don't have a POI as of yet because we're going to back out and we're actually going to set a waypoint here. And I am left clicking, left click on the mouse to select a waypoint, right click to select a point of interest. My point of interest is this home here at the end of the cul de sac, and my altitude for the point of interest will be three feet. So I'm going to select this. My point of interest is one now. I'm going to select the drop down into one. And I'm going to have it focus POI at this point. If you have it interpolate, then it's going to move as it transitions to the second waypoint. And I don't want that. I want it to move once it hits the second waypoint. So it'll give you the angle in degrees, which is minus 39 here. And we have a panorama preset. I do not want a panorama, so I'm going to go ahead and remove these. I just want a picture. So we will add, take a photo. And you can minus that out if you don't want it. Your options for your actions, just like in the app and anywhere else, uh, stay for X amount of seconds, take photo, start recording. Stop recording, rotate aircraft for however many degrees, or tilt camera for however many degrees. So that's pretty cool there. Uh, pretty straightforward to the point. And now we are going to move on to our next waypoint, which will be here. And I want my second POI to be right there at the other property on the end of the cul de sac. So again, I will select my waypoint, which I didn't mean to do. There we go and I will select that for the second POI. Focus POI there, which will give me the angle in degrees again. Here you see the curve side is 190 feet. Everything looks good to go. And of course in your settings here, it'll tell you what you wanna do on the finishing action. And I want it to return home. So we have six waypoints selected, three POIs. Don't forget to set the POI. There we go, and it's changed the heading. So it is 0.7 of a mile long for this new mission here, and it's expected to take two minutes to complete. Let's go to missions. Let's save this. Enter my mission name. Test for YouTubes. All right. Save the mission. After saving the mission, if you are logged into your account in the Litchi Mobile app, the mission will be synced automatically to your device. Alternatively, download the mission. After saving it, go to Missions, Open, My Missions, then place the download file inside your mobile device's Litchi Missions folder. The folder is located in the Litchi app slash missions on Android and Litchi slash missions on iOS. On iOS, you will need third-party software to transfer the mission files to the app folder, such as iFunbox. This screenshot shows where to place the files on your iOS device. So let's go ahead and open the screenshot and show you guys. All right, looks pretty simple there. Not really. I don't really use iPhone or iPad that much, but I hope this helps for you iPad users or iPhone users. Let's move on. Just know that it's there. It's good to know that it's there. We will save it. All right, our mission is saved. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, now that we got everything set up, let's go ahead and open up our file. We are logged into our account. Let's go ahead and open test for YouTube. That is what we created while we were on the PC. And we'll go ahead and load that mission. Let's go ahead and bring it up here. It looks like the mission is good and it is ready to go. Now all we have to do is press the little play button there. Estimated four minutes, time of completion. Total distance is 6,243 feet. So let's go ahead and go. Sends the mission. 
And the Mavic Pro is up and away. Let's go ahead and pull the screen up. We're going to pause it. What I've noticed is sometimes it has difficulty with its focus. So we're going to tap to focus a little further out in the distance there. Get it to focus. Hopefully that's good enough and we will continue the mission. It's going to raise up. It's going to start to head to the first waypoint, which is the middle of the yard here. Once it hits that 200 feet. So we'll go to 200 feet where it will make its way to the first waypoint and on to the continuous other five additional waypoints. Completing all six waypoints in hopefully under four minutes. And here we go. Alright, if you guys aren't aware of it already, there are some weather in the area, so we're hoping no rain showers comes and ruins our flight. But it looks like we'll be okay for the time being. It looks like we may actually even get some sun out there. So it's making its way to the second waypoint, which we have selected to be uh, pointed at the first POI. Alright, coming up on the second waypoint there, it's going to transition to the first POI. And on its way to the third waypoint, it'll transition to the second POI as well, which is right there. There's the cul-de-sac. First waypoint selected. And now the second waypoint is being viewed. It's going to continue that all the way to the fourth. Because we do not have interpolate selected, then it would transition slowly to the fourth POI. So as it makes it to the fourth waypoint, it is going to track the fourth POI. Moving on to the fifth waypoint. Again, if you want these camera movements to be a lot smoother, then select interpolate, and that will smooth out your camera movements between waypoints and between points of interest. So we'll go ahead and round off the curve on the fifth waypoint, headed to the sixth, where we have our last point of interest. And right on cue, go ahead and cancel the return to home. It worked just like a charm. We have return to home selected upon completion of the mission. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your help and support. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I will see you next time.